Hi guys, well, as you might be able to see, I've gone a little bit further with the uh, reading the can on this car. Um, what I've done is I have removed the dash, taken it out completely. Uh, there's only sort of five or six screws holding the dash in in one of these cars. It's all fairly simple. So I took the dash out and I found the uh, can cables, the can uh, wires going to the dash. And I cut those wires, cut them both the wires and joined this bit of blue wire to them and brought them out to here. Brought them out to here. So if I have these two cables connected, if I put those two connectors together that would basically be um, putting it back the way it is, as normal. Um, let's plug those in. Uh, the, the green and white are going to the dash, and the blue and white are going to the rest of the car. So the reason I did that is because I want to figure out what happens um, if the dash is completely disconnected from the rest of the car. and. To find that out, all I have to do is pull that out. Now, if I was to plug both of those those connections into those connections, they just go back to my little uh, canvas reader. And as you can see, the orange and blue are twisted together, so that is can high, and the white. Uh, the two whites are twisted together and that's can low. So basically what that's doing is teeing into the CAN bus system if these are both connected together. So if I do it like that and uh, 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 like that it's not easy to do one handed. Hold on. Right, so if I do that the can signals from the car basically come along in the blue and white, go down to here, they're teed into by this, come back up on the orange and white, or the green, the blue and white there, and go back that way. So that way, the CAN bus um, circuit is complete. So if I want to break into the CAN bus so that all I'm seeing is what's coming from the dash, that's all I need to do. So now if I put on the ignition, the only thing that will be coming up will be the uh, the only thing that will come up on my system here on the laptop will be the signals that are coming from the dash. So I'll set that up now and show you what happens when I do that. Okay, well right now I have the car started and ticking over. You can see the rev counter is working. Speedo will be working if I move the car. Temperature gauge is working. It's the car is cold and the um, fuel gauge is working. So, over here we've got all of the usual signals that we had before. Everything is just as normal. That's the car working completely normally. So what I'm going to do now is disconnect the rest of the car from the dash so that all that we're getting is the CAN signals coming from the dash. This is all we'll be getting going to the laptop. So that's it broken, and as you can see, if you look at this, some of those are still turning over, it's basically just the last three we're still getting, and the rest of them have all stopped. Um, so what will happen is if I was to refresh that, disconnect and then reconnect, Hopefully. Right. All we're getting is those three um, CAN bus signals coming from the dash. That's all we're getting. And if we look at the dash, we can now see we've got lots of error lights coming up. The Even the handbrake light came on and I don't have the handbrake on, so that's interesting. I didn't notice that before. But as you can see, we've got uh, temperature gauge has gone full scale. 
ABS light, traction control light, hill descent control light has come on and RPM has stopped working. So basically that tells us that all the stuff that's coming from the ECU and from the rest of the car um, on the CAN bus system is all disconnected. So I, I, the only thing that's really working now is the the uh, fuel gauge. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go back to this system. I'm going to inject some CAN signals in here and show you what happens. Back in a second. Okay, well as you can see I've turned the ignition off now and We've got two more lights come up. We've got the battery warning light and the oil pressure light. Those are both analog. They're nothing to do with the CAN system. So uh, we don't have to worry about them. We will have to worry about them when we are have got finally got the uh, electric motor going because it won't have an oil pressure light. And well, the battery symbol, well, we'll figure out some way of taking that off. Not too worried about that. But what I wanted to show you was at the moment the hill descent control light is showing as a warning symbol. So what I can do is if I send this little um, sequence of bytes to the dash, what I'll do is I'll click on send all. I'll just put you up here while I do that. I click on send, the light goes out. That's pretty cool. Um, if I was to change that from being zero zero to zero one, you see what happens? It goes green. So that is the control. Uh, it goes the control bytes for the hill descent control system. Um, so I know I can control that, I know I can turn the light off so and if I want to use it for something I can. Uh, it's probably never going to be used but it's certainly there as an option. Okay what I can also do is control the RPM because 316 is the ID that controls RPM. So if I send this bunch of bytes to it, let's see what happens. Okay, 20, 2020 brings it to, what's that, about 1200 RPM. If I was to change that to, say, 2030, it goes up to almost 2000 RPM, and so on. So that's quite easy to control the RPM. I'll just stop it again. Okay. And possibly slightly less important, but slightly less important because I'm hoping that I won't have to to do this but um, where is it speed there you go 153 control the speed so if I go back to our software and put in 153 And send that. I'm not sure what that's going to give me because I haven't actually looked. I haven't checked to see what I'm sending, but there you go. There's a speedometer. It's being controlled by sending 153. Now, I don't think I'll need that because... So I was interrupted by my wife heading out there. Um, I'm hoping I won't need to control the speedometer because I'm hoping it will be controlled by the CAN signals coming from the ABS unit. Um, I don't intend to disconnect that, um, so the speedometer should just work uh, without me having to do anything. Um, but anyway, it's something that I can do, and you'll also notice that when I do send those signals to it, um, on this occasion one of the lights went out, and the reason only one went out is because when I sent that signal to it, one of these was... Um, an odd number. So if I set that to say 10 and look up again you can see both of those warning lights have gone out. It seems to be that if I send an odd number to uh, the speedometer um, 
one of the lights goes out, but if I send an even number, number to the speedometer, both lights go out. So I thought that was quite interesting. But anyway, it just goes to show that we can control. I'll just uh, stop sending those signals. And you see have all the lights come back on again. Send again. That's also interesting, I just noticed that the, um, the brake warning light, handbrake warning light, also went off. So I presume that wasn't the handbrake warning light, that's actually just a warning light probably coming up uh, in conjunction with the ABS unit. So that's good. Hopefully, like I say, the ABS unit will remain connected. The ECU will probably have to be disconnected from the system because uh, with the ECU, ECU running, there's that much can bouncing about the system. Um, it is conflicting with the CAN signals that I'm sending and causing problems. So I suspect we'll have the ECU connected to the dash, uh, sorry, the ABS connected to the dash and the ECU disconnected. At least I think that's the way we're going. But anyway, that's, I thought that was interesting. It was the fact that we're able to control so much of the dash just by sending CAN signals. I can control the temperature gauge as well, but I seem to be able to make it either go cold or mid temperature and I can't seem to be able to uh, set it to go temperatures in between. Even if I sent the can signals that I can see um, from having seen the car when it was when it was running cold or running lukewarm, I still can't get it to um, it's either cold or warm a dead center in the middle and that's it if I send any signals to it at all. So I'll have to spend a bit more time trying to figure out what's going on there, but not something I'm too worried about. Anyway, that's what that's what I'm doing at the moment. That's what I've done, and I thought it might be interesting to to show you the um, what we can actually achieve. At the moment, I can only send a single batch of data at a time, but obviously that's just this particular piece of software. Once we get the thing going properly, uh, we'll be We'll have some bespoke software written for the the um, Arduino to make sure that it sends all the relevant signals. So, but it's it's great to see that we can actually control this quite so easily. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.